In this tutorial, we're going to be making an embossed leather journal with externally visible stitching. Start by printing the pattern. You can get this and many other patterns on my Etsy store. Every pattern has a front page with an overview like this that includes dimensions, materials, and an overview of what's included. This pattern has two components, the boards. You'll need to print three more, or you can trace it depending on your preference. and the cover, which is divided into two pieces that you'll need to tape together along this central line here. I use clear tape for that. The first thing we're going to do is prepare our interior pages. I have this tool made for me by Bill Duran from Punished Props. It has a right angle and this central strip that I can replace with something either hard or soft, depending on what I'm doing. In this case, we're using this hard plastic strip so that we can fold pages. I lost some footage here, so I'm showing you an example with some blank pages, but effectively you're going to put together the number of pages you want in your signature, in this case we're using three, and you're going to fold them all together. Press with your fingers, and then we'll come in with this tool called a bone folder. We're going to use that to make a really nice, crisp fold. We're going to do that on all of our pages. A signature is a bundle of folded sheets that creates your interior pages. This journal pattern uses seven signatures that are each six sheets or, let's see, six times four is 24 pages because you count the front and the backs of the sheet. The next thing we need to do is poke holes in these signatures so we can stitch them. As you can see, I've already made some marks on this very first signature. Now I'm gonna show you how I did that. The pattern for our cover already has holes marked, so we can use that as our guide to mark out our signatures. I just took our first signature here and aligned it so that it was centered along the holes and then marked each one with a pencil. Now to transfer these holes to our other pages, we're going to use a different tool. My grandpa helped me make this one. It's just two boards with some bolts attached so that I can screw them together tightly. A book press, if you will. You can also use cutting boards for something like this if you don't have a super fancy actual book press. We're going to get our pages together nice and square as best as we can, and then we're going to put them into the press and just clamp it nice and tight. If you don't have something that you can clamp like this, you can also use some heavy books or a couple of rulers that you can tape together nice and securely. You just need to be able to draw on the spine without the pages shifting. Using these marks on the first signature as my guide, I'm going to take my ruler and make sure it's nice and square against my cutting surface here, and we're going to just draw straight lines across all the signatures to line up with those first marks. Make sure your signatures are in binding order here, because that is going to make a difference. We're going to bring back the other tool that I had Bill make for me and swap out the hard plastic center for this piece of leather. This is so we can punch holes through pages and have a soft surface on the background to help us with that. You absolutely don't need a tool like this in order to do book binding. I just found that I've been making several books and it makes it a lot easier to have something square to press the pages into. I used to use just some cardboard pieces glued together, so whatever works for you in order to get the pages square is totally fine. You can punch them on cardboard, fabric, foam, whatever works best for you. You don't need to have a specialized tool.
I'm just using my awl here to punch directly through the spine of the signature that we've folded already, based on the marks that we made. Now our signatures are punched and folded and ready for assembly. So we're going to set them aside and start working on our cover. Transferring our pattern over to leather is very simple. We're going to lay it on our piece of leather. I recommend at maximum three to four ounces here. One to two ounces would probably work better, especially for embossing, but I'm gonna show you how you can do it with this slightly thicker leather. We're going to lay everything out and then affix it with cheap masking tape. I like the cheap stuff because it makes it easier for me to punch holes because I can see through it nice and easily. To punch the holes in our leather, we're going to use a 1.5 millimeter round hole punch. We're going to ignore those holes in the middle and I will explain why later. Once that's done, we can take some cutting shears like these or a box cutter, and we're gonna cut our pattern out along the lines. This next step is a neat trick for any time you need to transfer lines over onto leather. On the back side of our pattern along the lines we want to see, we're gonna take a pencil and scrape a whole bunch of graphite onto those areas. In this case, I want to mark where the corners are that the boards are going to match up with once we lay it onto the leather cover. Then we're going to take the inside or flesh side of our leather and have that facing up and press the graphite side of our pattern down against it. We can use our holes here that we've already punched to make sure our alignment is correct. Once you're confident with your alignment, we can take a ruler and a ballpoint pen and draw over those lines that we want to see on the leather. See how it transferred over the graphite? We're now going to do that with the rest of our corner markings and the other side of the spine to give ourselves a guide for when we're gluing down our boards. You can see now we have marks for the spine as well as the upper and lower corners for where the boards are going to glue. Do the other side and then let's move on. This is a neat little tool called a V-gouge. It has a V-shaped blade that allows you to cut a V-shaped groove or gouge into the leather. You can adjust it by twisting this little bit at the top here and you wanna make sure it's not too deep because you can actually cut all the way through your leather with this tool. If you don't have something like this V-gouge, you can also try wetting your leather and scoring the inside with something like a bone folder or even a ballpoint pen to help you get those nice crisp fold marks on the spine. It's important to really take your time with this tool. You don't want to force it and accidentally cut through your leather. It's okay to go over the same groove multiple times to get the depth and the fold that you want.
If you're using slightly thicker leather like I am, we're gonna need to remove some material from the edges and the area that we're going to emboss. To do that, I'm gonna use this skiving tool. It's effectively just a handle with a razor blade screwed into it. You can use a box cutter for this as well, but I, I have this tool, so I'm gonna use it. Just like with the V-gouge, this is a slow and patient process because you, again, can absolutely just cut straight through to the other side of your leather. It takes some time and some patience to skive off enough material to get the thinness that you want. This isn't 100% necessary in order to successfully make a book with a cover like this. You can totally just wet the edges and fold them over and have a book that's just fine. But I wanted to show you how this works in case you do have leather that's a little bit too thick and you want to try to skive it down. You can see here the difference between this unskived edge. This is a roughly three to four ounce leather here, probably about a millimeter or two thick versus the bit that we just thinned down, you can see it's about half as thick as it was before. Once you're happy with your cover, we can move on to working on our boards. This is actually going to supply support for our covers and make them rigid as opposed to a floppy soft cover. You're gonna take this board pattern that's included and glue it down just lightly. It doesn't need to be permanently affixed, so I'm using a glue stick. The boards I recommend for this pattern are one millimeter chipboard. You can usually find it in the craft section of stores, or in this case, I got them on Amazon for pretty cheap. You can get a whole bunch of them, which means you get to make a whole bunch of books. As always, all the tools and materials that I use in this video are linked in the description down below, like this handy dandy box cutter I got from my friends over at Punished Props. Definitely pick one up, it's nice. Once you've cut one board, if you want to, you can use that to trace out your other boards. It's tempting to take these boards and simply cut them in half because they are listed as being eight and a half by 11, but I will show you why I don't do that. Because it is a lie. These sheets aren't actually eight and a half by 11. One piece is smaller, one piece is taller. This is not actually something you can cut in half and have it work. So we're gonna use this larger one, not the smaller one. Now that we have our boards cut, we can prep the special one that we're going to need in order to do our embossing. I've printed a picture to scale of what I want to put on this cover, and in order to cut it out, we're just going to glue it down like we did with the other board piece. I'm just making sure that I'm nice and centered here so that the piece is where I want it. The pattern does not include this specific design. I want you guys to be able to make anything you want. So experiment, try seeing what kinds of things you can emboss and what you wanna have on your very own journal. It's a really cool process. But if you have a laser cutter, I highly recommend doing that instead of cutting it out by hand because it does take a lot of time and my fingers got very tired. This is the reason we're using four boards instead of two. In order to get this embossing pattern, we need to have an open spot for the leather to push down into, 
but then also have a closed spot on the back end so we don't just have a hole in our cover. So we're going to take this board that we just cut a piece out of and then glue it onto the previous board to make a two millimeter thick chipboard cover. I used this white uh, super strong Elmer's glue here, but you definitely could use barge cement. And in fact, I would probably recommend that instead for most of the gluing on this project. Barge cement dries almost instantly and it's a super, super strong bond. It is very toxic, so be mindful of your environment when you're using it and wear a respirator if you can. But I do actually think that that might work better in this case. So I'd recommend that instead. If you do not have barge cement or would prefer not to use it, this Fibings Leathercraft cement is great. It's water-based, it works really well, it does take a little bit longer to dry, but it does form a really great, strong bond, and you can just apply it really, really easily. It's also cheaper than barge. There's no special process to gluing on this back cover. The main things I would say to pay attention to, besides your placement, is making sure you have a lot of adhesive on that inside edge where the board will actually be effectively naked to the rest of the book. There's a high likelihood that that part could peel off, so make sure it's glued down nice and securely. This is where I think barge cement would serve you better than this other glue, because you can apply it, let it dry, fold these edges over, and they'll bond instantly. You can totally do it with this Leathercraft cement. It works just fine, but it does take a little bit more finagling. It takes a little bit longer to fold these, these edges over successfully. I found my bone folder was really helpful here for pressing over these edges and getting a nice crisp edge. You could also use something like a ruler, you just want to be careful not to put a big dent in your leather or scratch it or anything like that. If you really find you're having a hard time getting the corners to fold over and stay and the other edges, you can try wetting the leather just a little bit, not too much, but just enough that it's not going to have quite as much springy resistance as it does when it's dry. We're definitely going to want to wet the front of our cover so that it's easier to press into the embossing and it'll also keep that shape once we've pressed it down. I'm not sure if barge cement would be the option to use for this front cover because we are interacting with damp leather, but it's always something you can experiment with on a scrap and see does barge work when leather is damp and does it work with embossing or is it too sticky? In this case, I'm still using this Leathercraft adhesive and I'm putting it on both sides, which is actually what you're supposed to do, but I kind of forgot on the back cover, but it still worked just fine.
Before we fold our edges over, we're going to start the embossing process, which is basically just pressing our damp leather into that impression that we cut out earlier. Again, this is a slow process of patience and a lot of care because you can very easily scratch the surface of the leather with the tools that you're using. The primary things I used were just my fingers, the tip of the bone folder, and also the kind of rounded back parts of some of the other tools that I had on hand. You can get a little creative with it, just be careful and make sure you're not going to damage the surface. But you want to put a lot of attention into the edges, making sure the center of your shape is pressed nice and flat, and then you'll get this lovely impression on the front of your journal. You can also choose to just completely forego this step if you don't want to have anything on the front of your journal. It's a nice extra touch that looks a little fancy, but it also works totally fine to not have it at all. Once you're done with the cover and happy with how your embossing looks, you can fold over these other edges. Once your edges are folded over completely, let them dry overnight under something heavy. Let's put some color on this bad boy. I'm gonna use this Kova color. It's basically an acrylic paint as opposed to a stain. I chose this beautiful dark pink, so I think that's gonna go well with the theme of this journal. But I'm also going to be using this EcoFlow water stain. This is a pearl color, and it's just going to add this nice little shimmery touch when I mix them together. You can stain your journal with whatever you want. You could use gel antique, you could use just plain water stain. I'm putting these two together because it's the colors that I happen to want and I like the brightness that you get from the Kova color and mixing it with the water stain makes it soak into the leather really nicely. To apply it evenly, I do it all in one direction and then I go back through and do it in the other direction and then I buff it. I'll usually do a couple of coats as well just to make sure it's really thoroughly colored. Make sure you also get your edges. Okay, so remember those holes that I told you we were going to talk about later? We're going to talk about them. I put those holes in this pattern so that I could put a pen loop on the spine to store this beautiful pen that I got to go with this journal. Because of the shape of the pen and the way the holes were set, it just, it did not work out. I tried several different things, it wasn't happening. I will leave the holes in the pattern in case you decide you would like to add your own, but it does make it harder to lay the journal flat to write in. But in the end, I just didn't like how it ended up looking. I tried a leather loop, I tried elastic, this is the old cover, the rivets ended up looking super yucky, I tried putting a loop on the back cover, nope, not having it. So I made a new one, and we're just gonna move forward with this one as if this is what we did the whole time. Nice clean spine, no nasty holes. Let's move on. 
I have this beautiful gold paper that I'm going to use to line our covers so we can hide all this super fabulous cardboard in here. Uh, I've already cut them down to size. They are the exact same size as the chipboard that we cut. Because the leather adds some extra thickness, there's just a perfect little allowance around the outside. All you're gonna do is apply some white glue and then put them in place to dry. And hey, if you're enjoying this video or enjoy any of the other videos that I've made, please consider joining my Patreon. I release videos once a month, a whole month early for my patrons compared to the public. So this video, my patrons will have had access to it for a month already before it's available to the public, along with access for free to the patterns that I make every month. It's super helpful to me to have patrons. It basically funds my entire existence. This is what I do for my full-time job. So if you've got a few bucks to spare per month to help support me making videos and tutorials like this, I would super duper appreciate it. Once you're done applying the paper, we can set some weights on the journal to let them dry overnight and stay nice and flat and not get wrinkled. These are my two heaviest books. What are the two heaviest books that you own? What would you use as journal weights? Tell me in the comments. Once those pages have had a little bit more time to dry, we can add our corner protectors. I have these cute ones that look like they have little moths on them. They're basically just a metal corner with bent-in edges that hold on to the book once they're hammered in place. They help protect corners, especially for leather books, of getting crinkled or damaged or bent in any way. You're just going to press it into place like this. And make sure it's all the way in the corner. Then you just take any kind of hammer and you're going to do sort of a drawing motion towards the inside of the book as you hammer. This is gonna help fold that over the edge of the book and really hammer it nicely into place. Once all the corners are affixed, we can put them back under our heavy books to sit for the rest of the night to dry completely. Our inside pages are all dry and our corners are attached and it's super shiny and be oh wait oh come back buddy I'm not okay <laughs> it's turned out really cool the next thing we're gonna do is add a ribbon bookmark I have this really cute Sailor Moon themed ribbon it's got little cats and bows and moons on it but it's a little wide so we're gonna cut it in half but first I need to figure out how long the ribbon's going to be to do that, I'm going to place it where it's going to attach on the spine, which is right on the inside here, so that we can both glue it and stitch it in place. I'm personally not a huge fan of the super long ribbon bookmarks that hang way out at the bottom of the book. They're technically a little bit more useful because they're easier to grab onto, but I chose to make this ribbon a little bit shorter so that it would work, but also not be in the way. Awesome, so now we've got the length figured out. We're gonna scoot over here really quick and we're gonna cut this ribbon in half to make it not quite so huge. I don't start cutting directly at the top of the ribbon because I find they tend to crumple and it's a little bit more difficult to cut. So I'm actually cutting a little bit lower, then I go up to the top and make sure I'm getting a nice clean edge.
to prevent this freshly cut edge from fraying, I'm gonna use a lighter. And you just very briefly graze the flame across the edge of the ribbon. This melts the fibers and seals them together and it will not fray ever again. It's like a, it was always a skinny ribbon. I don't know what you're talking about. Thick ribbon who? I'm also just gonna do a quick cute little thing with the tip of the ribbon here and give it a nice shape before I burn the edges. I'm going to mark where this is going to sit on the spine, and it just so happens to fit perfectly between those outside holes we punched. I, um, I definitely did that on purpose. I'm just using an awl here to make light marks, but you could also use a pencil if you wanted to. You're not really going to see the spine. And we're going to affix it with my favorite barge cement. It's a great contact cement, but it is toxic. So please make sure you're in a well-ventilated area and wearing a respirator. We're just gonna put a little bit on the spine and a little bit on the ribbon, and then we'll be able to press it in place. Leave it alone for about five minutes. You'll know the barge is ready to adhere when it stops being sticky to the touch and feels a little bit dry. Carefully place your ribbon. I made sure that any glue that might be visible was pressed down onto the spine and not sticking out the top. And then press it into place gently. That's now pretty much a fix forever. To make our lives easier for stitching later, I'm going to take my awl and just gently poke new holes through the ribbon so that our stitching holes line up with those holes. When punching the second row of holes in the ribbon, I actually found that it was a bit easier to do it from the inside while holding the book up to some light so I could see the holes through the ribbon and poke them that way. It's finally time for stitching. I love this part. I'm going to stitch with this beautiful glitter embroidery floss that I think is perfectly on theme for our journal. We're gonna separate out three lengths that are about two and a half to three feet long each. To prep the threads for stitching, and just to make our lives a little bit easier, I'll take a small tea candle like this one, or you can use beeswax if you have that on hand, and I'm just going to run the thread through the wax of the candle to basically create our own waxed thread. This particular embroidery thread was really prone to unwinding itself, so I tried my best to wax the tips as much as I could to help keep it in one cohesive piece. I think my tea candle here is a little too old, so the wax was more crumbly than it was waxy. So make sure your candle is a little bit younger, so to speak, than this one.
Each vertical column of holes along the spine here correlates to a signature. So our first signature will be attached exclusively to that first column of holes, but we're going to start with all of the pages by stitching along the center. Open your signature to the center sheet and press the needle through the lower of the two center holes and do that through the cover as well. From the outside, put the needle through the top first hole and then bring it back through the top hole in the middle of the signature. Put the needle back through the lower hole to the outside of the cover, and then we're ready to add our second signature. Because each hole correlates to a signature, you can always tell which place you're at by counting which hole. So this is the second hole in the row, therefore we're connecting our second signature. We're now just going to do a series of repeating loops, coming in from the outside of the book, going through the signature back to the outside and then connecting the next signature all the way through from one end of the spine to the other. If you need to tighten stitches, you can use an awl to gently slide under the external stitches and pull them tight, but don't pull them too tight because you can rip your pages. It takes a bit of practice to figure out the ideal tension for affixing your pages. Too loose and the whole thing feels floppy and not put together, but too tight and you're gonna have a hard time being able to turn pages or may simply tear through the signatures entirely. Once you've threaded through the last signature, we're going to go back through to the other side of the spine where we started. This will create a nice X pattern on the spine and also make sure all of our signatures are really nicely secured. It's effectively the same looping process we just did. We're just gonna go back through and do it in reverse.
Once you get back to the first signature, loop the thread underneath our stitch and tie a knot. Because there are a lot of synthetic fibers in this thread, I'm using a lighter to really quickly seal the edges of this knot so it doesn't come undone. You can also run the lighter over the outside stitches just to make sure all the wax is firmly melted into the fibers and there's no excess fiber sticking out. We're going to repeat this exact same process on the top and bottom of our book. And once you've done that, you'll have a whole custom leather journal all for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy.